Hey everybody, RC here. I just wanted to kind of do a follow up video based on the video that I did yesterday on AI and using AI to be able to kind of solve problems in general. I think one of the things that I'm really excited about with it is the fact that I don't really know if these things are gonna work and you're kind of pushing all of this stuff around and you're like, hmm, this could be some cool creative problem solving. So to that end, I posted that video and I was like, a lot of people had emailed and talked and commented and all that stuff. And I got a message from a friend of mine, Brian, who turned around and said, listen, do you think that I could do this, right? And I'm like, to be honest with you, I don't really know, but I, I think it's worth checking, right? I think it'd be kind of neat. And the question was, could you take a series of pictures, let's say 200 pictures, right? And could you then say, all right, well, based on what I give you, could you just tell me which are the best pictures uh, based, you know, what, what do you think are the best pictures out of the series? And I'm like, all right, well, let's, let's give that a shot, right? So inside of here, I'm gonna go into ChatGPT, right? I'm using Microsoft Edge for it. And inside of here, I said, if I had 200 pictures in a folder that I uploaded to you, could you tell me which are the best based on things like aesthetics and composition. So while I can analyze images for certain characteristics, clarity, color balance, presence, and, and stuff, determining the best based on aesthetics and composition is somewhat subjective. What one person considers beautiful, another might not. Likely to be of higher by looking for certain technical characteristics. Okay, well, that's not bad. You can upload a few images and I can try to be able to identify it. But can you do 200. Quite intensive, some constraints, limitation of processing time, smaller subset of images. I can do an analysis on that. Okay. Uh, and I can get started on that analysis. All right. I was like, okay, so that's kind of cool, right? So it's got some stuff, but let's try something else, right? So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to type in gemini.google.com. So let's go to Gemini. If I uploaded a folder of 200 images, could you tell me which of them would be more likely to be successful pictures based on a criteria? Here's how I could help analyze your folder of images. Define my success. What does successful mean for your pictures? Consider technical quality, sharpness, emotional impact, subject matter. So I'm already kind of liking the results that we're having here. Right? Image analysis tools. Okay, so technical assessment, composition analysis. Some tools provide an aesthetic score. Huh. Providing a report. After the analysis, I could do a score breakdown. Not bad. Would you like to get started? Let's define your success criteria. Okay. So I had to go back to Brian and I had to say, Hey, listen, um, what are the, uh, what are the criteria that you want to be able to look at for this? I just had to take a second to copy the stuff that he said, right? So I'm just going to paste it here. Right. And I want to be able to just put these will be sports pictures. So the criteria for successful pictures would be that they are, and then he wanted sharp, properly exposed. The pictures must capture peak action in the sport and show emotion. Now, there could be some other things that we could do for that, that we could say that are more successful. But for now, I think that let's see what it does with just that information. Okay, so technical quality, decisive moments, peak of a jump, the moment of contact with a ball, emotion, metadata could have some stuff. There's the report. Do I have a folder of images that I want to be able to do? Yes. So do I want to upload the folders directly? K. 
can I direct upload here? Huh, so I can't do it, but I could do it doing cloud storage using Google Drive. I like that idea. Huh, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna go to drive.google.com. And inside of here, I have a folder because I tend to do all of this kind of stuff, right? So <laughs> new files to download. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab inside of here that test project that I had here. And I'm gonna call that test Brian. Sorry, Brian. I'm gonna temporarily add it over here. And he sent me, I think it was like 38 pictures, right? But inside of here, he took those pictures and he put them inside of here and he just did low quality shots, right? And it looks like it's complete. So I'm gonna come over here, right click and share. And I'm just gonna set the share to be anyone with the link and I'm gonna copy the link. Now I'm gonna come over here and go, I have a Google Drive link here. So now I've given it the link. I would like to use the Google Drive link option that you specified in option one. So let me know when the link is ready. My link is ready. So it looks like we're stuck in a loop here where it says it's ready. I wonder if I can do this. Can I zip it? And from inside of here. Okay, so now let's see, will it work if I remind it? So now look, we've worked through this loop here, right? That says, you asked me to send, I just told it. You asked me to send you a link for these analysis, but then tell me you can't do it. You're absolutely right. I apologize for this. Let me clarify the situation and the steps we could take. Here's what happened. You wanted your sports images. We established it as the best option. I mistakenly assumed I had the capacity and, but I can't. Let's drag 38 images into this chat window to try this as an analysis. Okay, so let's just see, we'll figure this out. So now it's working with me to try to figure this out. I'm gonna grab these pictures here. I'm just gonna go whoop, whoop, put them in here. Oh, can't help with images of people yet. Hmm, well, that's not good. Brian's not looking good, I gotta tell you. Back to ChatGPT. Would you like to perceive the smallest sample? Yes. Can I do 38? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna grab these and put them in here. Okay, so it looks like it's about 10 at a time. So it looks like I can proceed with an aesthetic and composition based on technical aspects for this image. For each image, I will consider clarity, focus, the strong balance, I've framed within the shots. Based on general principles of photography, it doesn't account for personal taste. It's looking at the first image and we'll continue with the rest one by one. That looks like it could work there, right? If I go to Google, it looks like the limitation is I can't help with images of people yet. I'm gonna guess that that has a lot to do with settings that it has for it more than it does the images of people. So I'm gonna say, why can't you help with images of people? Privacy and consent, misidentification, legal restrictions. So it's almost overcorrected, possibly? I'm not sure. Don't know how I feel about that just yet. Thank you for uploading the images. Please note, I'll start by looking at the first image and then the rest one by one. Out of the pictures that I sent you, which would you say would be the most successful based on your criteria? I would like to compare it against my criteria. So now it is processing those pictures. So it started, it looks like it started at around 11.30 at night. It looks like it ran into an error about a minute in, in the code when I was trying to analyze a picture. So it says that each image has potential exposure issues. All right, so we're looking, it's 11.32. Colors could be misrepresented or unintelligent color cast, emotional impact. Says with current, we require human judgment, personal cultural perceptions of the content. 
it may be valuable to consider which image resonates with you or your intended audience in terms of composition, the story it tells, and the emotion that it evokes. So, okay, so these, these things, right? So the robot may not win today. So instead of ChatGPT, let's say, would it help if I told you these will be sports pictures, so the criteria for sexual so the criteria for the successful picture would be that they are sharp, properly exposed, the picture must capture peak moment of action and show emotion. So we can reevaluate with that specific criteria. So now it processes it again. So the one thing that I think that's really interesting about this is the whole concept of limiting the amount of domain knowledge, right? So rather than just saying, well, what is good? Well, good could be a very subjective thing. But you can get better analysis of this kind of stuff if you turn around and you go, well, it's good based on this specific criteria. So when uh, we were talking about this earlier and he said whether or not I can do that, I was like, well, you tell me what is supposed to be good. Like, what do you define as good? So he gave us those couple of things, right? So now we can narrow that focus. Given that these are sports pictures, the criteria for success include sharpness, proper exposure, capture peak action, showing emotion, I can reevaluate. Look at that, I put them in a contact sheet. All are quite sharp, okay? Most of the images are well exposed. Look at that, talking smack about Brian's work. Slightly overexposed or reflections on the court. So it knows that it's a court, but it doesn't detract from the overall quality. Peak action. Several images have done an excellent job of peak action where players are mid jump, reaching for the ball. The majority of these images are successful generally well sharped and capture both peak action of the sport and the emotions of the players. Some might require some slight adjustment and exposure, but they effectively represent the excitement and the intensity of the sports event. Would you rank them? Or let's say, could you rank these in a specific order, right? That would be obviously very subjective, but let's just kind of see what it does. So just to let you know, time is 1136 since we started this. Based on the criteria, here's a ranking of the images for most of least successful. Image five, driving towards a hoop, focused on expression, defender in a tense stance, sharp, well composed, and the emotions are visible through the player's expression and body language. Number four, two, three, one, six. This is an action shot. I love number six, right? So it's image six. It says action shot of the ball in midair, but it lacks the clarity and the sharpness of the other images. The exposure is somewhat uneven with the background being brightly lit compared to the foreground. Uh, now I'm a little lost. I'm like, which one's image six? Which one is image six? Ah, uh, okay. We saw moments of actions and emotional reactions from the players and the coaches. I will now identify the bit image that best aligns with these criteria and display it to you. Please hold on. Okay, so it finds this picture. Based on the successful criteria, it sees this picture. Please note, without the ability to subjectively evaluate the emotional content and the peak action moment, it's an educated best based on typical characteristics of sports photographs. So are we going to all of a sudden outsource this job uh, to AI? Mm, probably not yet, but the stuff that it can do, I think is pretty intense so far, right? Because we can specify characteristics. We can do some sort of comparative analysis. We can ask it to go back in and look at very specific areas as to what it thinks is good, right? It can pull this information it can make a judgment across these sets of pictures based on this. Like this looks like a big image critique section, right? So you could define some parameters and say, well, this is what I think is successful for capturing this, right? Let's say you're going on a photo walk and I'm looking for A, B, C, D, and E. You could define those parameters inside of a GPT and then turn around and say, all right, Let's make a custom GPT, go out and shoot, bring me those pictures, and let's see if you hit that target. So maybe not something for this, but for something like that, I think it could be kind of cool. 
But it's an interesting experiment, right? And we learned a little bit about what Gemini can do or can't do. We learned what this can do, and we learned about our ability to be able to kind of take these things and limit the scope by adding parameters to it, right? Or adding some guidelines to be able to narrow the focus in a little bit. So it was kind of fun. <laughs> so uh, I've got a couple of other things that I want to be able to show, but I, I kind of wanted to work on that one because it's it allows us to be able to kind of start thinking about what it is that we could do with these things. But anyway, talk to you guys later.